The investigation continues into who sent pipe bombs here to CNN's headquarters in Manhattan. I'm Laura Podesta, right outside the Time Warner Center. I'll tell you what the president is now promising the perpetrator. The planning process for the new high school has been an ongoing project here in Bozeman. And now the district is deciding the boundary lines. Who's going to go to what high school? I'm Emma Hamilton, reporting from Bozeman, and I'll have that story for you coming up next. Good morning to you. It is 630. Welcome to your Thursday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Less than two weeks before the midterm elections and a wave of pipe bombs have been sent to political targets. It's been putting it on the spotlight for an escalating political tension in the country. CBS News' Laura Podesta is outside CNN's office in New York City, where one bomb forced the anchors to broadcast from the street. Pipe bombs sent to several prominent Democrats and critics of President Trump this week have triggered an intense investigation to find those responsible. We've seen this before. We've seen worse. And we will not be intimidated and we will bring these perpetrators to justice. None of the bombs went off. All were intercepted before reaching their targets, which include former President Obama, Congresswoman Maxine Waters and Hillary Clinton. We are fine, thanks to the men and women of the Secret Service. We are outside safely. All of our CNN colleagues that we know of are outside. One bomb addressed to former CIA director John Brennan here at CNN's Manhattan offices forced the evacuation of the Time Warner Center. Brennan later criticized the president for his political attacks. A lot of this rhetoric really is counterproductive. It is un-American. President Trump has used many of the intended targets as punching bags during his campaign rallies. Maxine Waters, a very low IQ individual. Last night, he presented a more subdued version of his speech in Wisconsin. And by the way, do you see how nice I'm behaving today? This is like, have you ever seen this? The president promised to hold the perpetrators accountable. Any acts or threats of political violence are an attack on our democracy itself. He did scold the media, saying it needs to set a more civil tone. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Now, bombs were also sent to a uh, former Attorney General Eric Holder and billionaire George Soros. Holder's package was incorrectly labeled and sent back to a phony return address, the Florida Office of Congr uh, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So we're going to continue to follow what is all going on with all of that. Uh, coming up stuff. more uh, in depth at uh, 7 o'clock on CBS this morning. Very much so. Matt joins us now. Still a really nice afternoon yesterday. Um, I was kind of bummed out with a little bit of cloud cover because I wanted to see a little bit more of that full moon. But made for a really nice morning today. Temperatures are right up there. Uh, not bad. Temperature-wise, we're doing great. I think that uh, there is a chance of maybe some mountain showers uh, for the morning. Most of us are going to be dealing with pretty quiet conditions as far as rain is concerned. But the wind is going to be more of an issue into the afternoon. You can see the wind uh, kind of waving the flag on the MSU campus this morning. Temperature should be into the 50s, but our wind speeds between 10 and 20 miles an hour today with gusts near 30. We do have kind of a wet start to the weekend. We'll talk more about that, of course, coming up in weather in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. It's now 633. There are a lot of important decisions for Montanans to make in the midterm election, and not all of them involve politicians. That's right. Two big initiatives are on the ballot, and this morning we reveal the results of the MTN News Montana State University poll showing how likely voters appear to be leaning. Russ Riesinger is here to break down those numbers. When it comes to the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House race, most of the 2,000 voters we polled had already made up their minds. But voters aren't nearly as certain when it comes to the two initiatives on the ballot. Despite Big Tobacco spending more than $17 million to try and influence Montana voters. 185 is a massive new tax increase that deceptively claims to fund Medicaid expansion. Our MTN MSU poll shows more people in favor of raising tobacco taxes to continue funding Medicaid expansion than against, but just barely. It's a toss-up with 41.4% in favor of I-185 and 40.8% against. 17.3% don't know, and what they decide will make the difference. You have to realize most people, if you don't know, either you're not going to vote at all or you're going to vote the default position, which is no, right? You don't want to change the law. So this, this tight, tight race for 185 is probably to benefit for the opponents of 185 rather than the proponents of 185. 
The other initiative, 186, which would require permits for new hard rock mines in the state to be denied unless strict environmental requirements are met, appears to have a better chance of passing. 50.6 percent support the initiative, 28.6 percent oppose it, but there's still the unknown of those who don't know, 19.8 percent, and that could make it much closer than it appears. It's, it sounds like a good issue, right? We want to hold mines accountable. We want to have clean water. So I think this one has a better chance of passing, but it's ultra tight. I actually think when you take the don't knows into account, this is probably uh, too close to call. So those don't knows, the people who have not yet made up their minds, could very well decide what happens with these two initiatives on Election Day when they do finally make up their minds. Now, we also took a survey at the six-year levy. Almost 54% of voters polled say they do support it. About 22% were against it. About the same number said they were undecided. And the MTN MSU poll has a margin error of about two, or two plus or minus percent. Also, state auditor and Republican challenger to Senator John Tester, Matt Rosendale, dropped off his ballot yesterday. Uh, Rosendale cast his 2018 vote in his hometown of Glendive. The race between Tester and Rosendale has been hard fought to this point. Our MTN MSU poll shows Tester with a razor thin three point lead on Rosendale as of this morning. And Gallatin County has set a new record when it comes to the number of absentee voters. Gallatin County Clerk's Office has received 14,000 ballots, which is about 25% of all the ballots sent out. Both parties have been urging people to vote early throughout the absentee ballots. Gallatin Clerk and Recorder Charlotte Mills says that some people don't realize that they may already be on the absentee ballot list because of the change of the law. Now they changed the law, the Montana state law, where if you sign up for an absentee ballot, you are always on the list until you opt off. So more people are now getting absentee ballots. And so um, we've had a lot, you know, like there's been a lot of confusion. Now, by the way, the postage to send out your absentee ballot is 71 cents. That's two forever stamps. Don't forget that. Don't uh, forget. Shifting gears just a little bit, Bozeman's new high school has been a popular topic in the community for a while. And the district currently working to make some important decisions. MTN's Emma Hamilton has more on what the potential options are for the boundaries when Bozeman eventually has those two high schools. The high school transition committee's main discussion lately has been the boundary lines for when Bozeman has two high schools. Three options have been presented so far. Option A divides the city in half at 19th, with the east side attending the current high school and the west side attending the new high school. Option B still divides the city at 19th until Patterson, where the line then goes west. Option C is a little different. The divide remains the same as option A and B, but then has a rectangle from Bozeman High to Gallatin Valley Mall and Fowler Ave between West College and Durston. This option encourages those who live in walking or biking distance to the high school to do so. There hasn't been a final decision, and the committee is still taking suggestions from the community. There are folks that say, I like option whatever, and then there are other folks that say, have you thought about this? And so, yeah, we're getting good, we're getting good feedback, uh, good questions. Now there's a lot of planning and decision making that goes into the building of the new high school. And this specific decision isn't going to be an easy one to make. It's a dynamic decision for the committee, one that has many things to consider. The committee is looking at things such as the number of students in each school to try and keep it somewhat even, the socioeconomic factor, making sure to not split neighborhoods, and the efficiency of transportation. It's a process that, that in, it affects a lot, of, a lot of students, you know, and um, so we've got to make sure we do it right. We'll have two sons, a junior and a freshman, in the fall of 2020 when the second high school opens. I don't know that can, well, we're not going to have concerns. Both high schools are going to be awesome. And um, it'll be a win-win regardless of which high school we are zoned into. Um, so there's, there, there's, no, there's no concerns. It's, you know, just like every other family in town, it's more of a cur curiosity. What high school am I going to go to? What high, high school are my friends going to go to? you know, from a, from a student standpoint. Many families are anxious to hear the decision, but the district ensures both high schools will be great schools. Once the committee does make a recommendation, the school board will make the final decision. We're approaching this decision with what is best for our community as a whole. 
And that's, that's first and foremost, what's best for our community, what's, what's best for our students. In Bozeman, Emma Hamilton, MTN News. Now Emma tells us the district looking for feedback on the various options, suggestions for new ones. You can find contact information for that on our websites. A lot of information there. Absolutely true. Become and involved. You don't get a complaint later if you don't. I was just going to say, <laughs> make your voice be heard. That's go. right. Just like voting. Coming up after a quick break, we take a look at each of the candidates for Senate and where they stand on health care. But first, we're going to check in with CBS This Morning, see what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, we'll have the latest on the search to find who sent seven mail bombs. Former FBI profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole will tell us what clues could give away the suspect. And a new study claims a weed-killing chemical possibly linked to cancer is found in dozens of popular breakfast foods. Anna Warner explains what you can do to protect your kids. We'll see you at 7.